Hey everyone, it's Susie with Dragonfly Bees. I'm an online reseller, primarily in jewelry, and in this video, I'm having a pop-up sale of some of the items that I have from my Etsy shop, vintage jewelry. I'm offering them to you with uh, discounted subscriber prices. So if there's anything that you find you would like to purchase, just send me an email at dragonflybees at gmail.com. Um, yeah, that's a picture of me. Uh, since we're talking vintage, that's vintage me. Uh, that was taken quite some time ago, and that was the first and only time I permed my hair. Uh, I think it was called a spiral perm. Uh, I remember buying so much product uh, in order to maintain it, and it was a... Uh, it was fun times, crazy fashion, and um, I thought I'd share. So, oh, before we start, I just want to make mention, um, always check the description box below because you'll find some helpful information in there uh, with regards to ordering or maybe some of uh, the links that I shared. And um, yeah, let's start and see what I have. All right, let's start things off with this little girl. She's from the 60s. It's a cameo pendant necklace. It's by Art. She's framed in um, a really ornate gold tone, filigree, scrolly decorative design. And there's all these danglies underneath. There's a very decorative bail. And She's on an S chain, which is um, quite good um, in weight. She ends off in a spring clasp. Uh huh. And I gotta say, she's not she's not perfect. Um, if you can see, the cameo is not even set perfectly in the bezel. So when I measured that, that's about 132 inch gap right there on the top. So um, she also has some sort of residue on her eye, on her brow, and um, also on the back. So... That's the back, and you'll see there's the the mark, art with the copyright symbol. Um, the chain is 19 inches long, and she's about two and a half inches high, and one inch and five eighths wide. Um, art is Mod Art Company. It was started in the 40s by uh, author Pepper. So yeah, this is a 60s cameo pendant necklace, gold tone. And um, she's still very pretty. Next up, I have the sterling silver vintage from the 60s horseshoe pendant. There's a design in the front. It's got some weight to it too. It's not um, it's not light. In the back, as you can see, it's signed sterling. So this horseshoe is about a one inch and a quarter high and about an inch wide. So yeah, it'll bring you good luck. Here we have this pendant necklace. It is a four-pointed pendant with this faux, milky, cloudy, opalescent stone in the center. It's on this delicate chain, which is 17 inches long. Um, let's look at the end. It's on a spring clasp. And there is a, a maker's mark 
and it says Sarah Cove. So this is a Sarah Coventry um, pendant necklace, and it's actually from 1978. It's called the Moonbeam Necklace. It is um, about one and seven sixteenths of an inch high and one and a quarter inches wide. Um, Sarah Coventry jewelry was named after um, the granddaughter of someone by the name of Lyman Stewart. He founded Sarah Coventry back in 1949. He, it's recognized as the oldest direct selling uh, jewelry company in the world. I mean, they didn't design all of their jewelry. They used others, um, other manufacturers uh, to produce their jewelry. So yeah, Sarah Coventry is quite widespread. And this here, the Moonbeam necklace is from 1978. Here's another Sarah Coventry uh, piece of jewelry. This one's from 1973. It's from their um, Talisman of Love collection. And this one is their uh, Zodiac bracelet for cancer. It's silver tone. It's made up of these panels with the uh, crabs and mask. This has a fold over clasp. Let's see where it says Sarah Coventry. Uh, there it is, Sarah Cov. And this one is seven and three quarters of an inch uh, wide. So it's, it's kind of wide, but it's still very nice and in really good condition. It's a 1973 Sarah Coventry a zodiac bracelet for cancer for the sign cancer so this is also from the 70s and it's a Sarah Coventry cameo this here is um, gold tone it is a left facing cameo on this classic red wedge wedge wood blue backdrop <laughs> that was a tongue twister <laughs> it's on this gold tone filigree frame with the the beading um on the on the frame uh there's the back it says uh what's it say it says sc the initials sc for sarah coventry um this can be worn as a pendant because it has that hook and as a brooch. So she measures about one inch and one and three eighths inch high and about one inch wide. So yeah, she doesn't look too happy. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Here we have a apple. This apple is um, from 1961. So this, this is 60 years old. This is also a uh, Sarah Coventry piece of jewelry. Uh, it's a brooch. It's called um, Adam's Delight. It's in this brushed silver tone, well, textured, um, pattern and on the back right there behind behind that leaf it says Sarah Cov. it's quite heavy this here is two and a quarter inches high and one and three quarters inch wide so this is 60 year old apple right here Okay, this here is from the 70s. This is also Sarah Coventry. It's a textured um, pendant brooch. And it has this polished um, silver tone, wavy, squiggly design on top. 
This is quite large. It's um, two and seven eighths inch uh, high and two and an eighth inch wide. Now, I think those are glue marks, right? Well, this is from the 70s. Let's look at the back. Um, there it says, Sarah Cove. 1970s pendant brooch. Here's another pendant necklace, gold tone. Has like this double rope design around that frame of rhinestones. Diamond shape, but it also has these round open circles on the outer frame. There's um, four diamond shaped frames in the center and they all have one clear round rhinestone. It's on this gold tone chain. It has a spring clasp and uh, yeah, there's an extender. Uh, the back of this says Sarah Cove. Okay, this is another Sarah Coventry pendant necklace. This one here is, um, the chain is 17 inches long. The pendant is about um, an inch and a half high. And um, it's called a candlelight. That's it. It's from 1972. As you see, look, it's open. You can see the back. So this is 1972 um, candle candlelight blah candlelight necklace from Sarah Coventry. Next we have this really beautiful sterling silver puffy heart. It is open work. You could see through it on this really nice sterling silver chain with a spring clasp. It is 24 inches long and the heart is about an inch across and an inch high. And then inside the heart, there is some writing. I don't know if you can see it, it's in there. And it says Sterling spelled out as well as the maker, which is um, Jelaine. J-E-L-A-I-N-E. -E. Uh, this is from 1955. This is really a beautiful vintage heart pendant necklace. This next item is very special. In fact, uh, I want to tell you a bit about the history of the person who um, founded this company. As you can see, there are some missing stones. I don't have this listed yet. I'm not sure how people will feel about that unless they um, they can repair it. But this ring is made by a company called uh, Florenza. And there's a really great backstory to, to the person who um, founded this company. And I want to share that with you. His name is Dan. Daniel um, Kasoff, and uh, his real name is Kov Kosofsky, something like that. Well, this is um, back in the 20s. He was working in um, the garment industry, possibly a factory, and he was having a meal in a restaurant, but someone stole his coat. So there was someone else that was um, dining in the restaurant. And, you know, that person was Mr. Uh, Speyer or Speer, something like that. It's S-P-E-I-E-R. And Mr. Speer felt really bad for, for Dan. So he gave him some money to buy a new coat. So Dan said, you know, he'll pay him back as soon as he could and he actually did so when he did that Mr. Spire was so impressed with his um, I guess integrity that he offered Dan a job at his company and his company was the Spire 
uh, costume jewelry company. So Dan ended up working there for 10 years, and he learned the ins and outs of um, costume jewelry. So in 1937, Dan opened his own company, and it was called the Dan um, Kasoff Corporation. Well, that went on. He personally supervised all the designs and the manufacturing. He got the best stones from Germany, Austria, the Far East. Um, and a lot of them were made especially for his company, which he called Florenza. Florenza is the name of Dan's wife. So Florenza is known for um, pastel and frosted colored rhinestones. They're also known for um, cameos that were mounted on 24 karat gold plate settings. He's almost, um, he's also famous for um, Florenza gold is what they would call his settings uh, or it would be known as French gold or French rose. Um, he uh, sold his jewelry in Lord and Taylor's, Bloomingdale, Saks Fifth Avenue, um, really high-end New York City department stores. And um, he even designed perfume bottles later on uh, for Estee Lauder and, and Revlon. He also, um, many other companies contracted with uh, Florenza, such as um, Coro, Weiss, Kramer, and Hattie Car uh, Carnegie. So Florenza is really a, a bolo. Be on the lookout. This is my first and only Florenza item that I found. And, um, well, they closed shop in 1981. When, when Dan passed away, his son, uh, Larry, joined, joined the um, firm. And I think that was like in 1950. Well, he, he had an accident uh, in 81. And that's when Florenza no longer um, existed. So, yeah, this is a really nice ring. It has green enamel. It's got this really pretty green faux stone. But the design is exquisite. I mean, the workmanship and the, even the back. Look at that. The design on the band. Uh, this here is adjustable. And as you can see, it's a Florenza with the uh, C copyright symbol. Uh, yeah, I think you could see it. Let me see if, let me see if I zoom in. Can you see it? There it is, Florenza. I mean, his his wife's name was actually Florence, but hey, you know, add a a, a at the end, and it sounds um. It sounds prettier, I guess. But yeah, this one here is missing a stone right there. So I guess it was this green, green one, kind of blue, kind of, I don't know. And here's a clear one, clear rhinestone, and it's missing one on top. Uh, because of the band, I guess it is adjustable. So, yeah, this ring is from the 50s. And um, it's by Florenza. I hope you enjoyed the story. Next up, we have these earrings. They are from the 60s. They are marcasite and onyx. little stud earrings. The back of this one is marked 925A. So 
I'm not sure what the A stands for. And here is another pair, which is looks identical to me, but the back of these are marked 925JC. So let's take a look at them together. Uh, okay, yeah, there is a, a slight difference. The one on the left has a more, I guess, thicker bezel, and the one on the right, or is it me? Do they look the same to you? This one looks higher. So, yeah, this bezel seems thicker. If you look at the frame of it around the black stone, it looks a bit wider and this looks a bit less. So, we have a pair marked 925A, which has the thicker bezel, and another pair, which is marked 925JC, with the uh, more narrow bezel. Okay, since we're talking about earrings, here's another pair. These are actually from the late 40s, early 50s. They're German. They're aluminum. They're very light. They're clip-on earrings. They're like a marcasite pattern um, with a center uh, faux pearl. Um, they're about one and one eighth inch wide and about an inch high. Let's look at the back. That's the back. And they are signed. I always do that. They're upside down. They are signed Germany. So here you have these um, German aluminum leaf earrings, clip-on earrings. So here's another item from Germany, and they are also aluminum, spun aluminum. I mean, look at this, look at this intricate work. Could you imagine sitting there just winding that around by hand? This is a brooch made of spun aluminum wire. This is also from the late 40s, early 50s. It's like a silver tone with some gold, I don't know, gold wash on top. Isn't that great? Um, yeah, it comes with earrings. They're clip-ons, aluminum. One thing about vintage jewelry, um, not everything is uh, signed because they're sets. So it's really common to find like um, maybe the necklace or the earrings or the bracelet are signed, but not the other. It's because they're in sets. So here's the, the, um, the earrings. They are clip-on, and the earrings are signed. And right there, you can see uh, Germany. So yeah, this is a set, sold as a set. Spun uh, aluminum wire, brooch and earrings. Next, we have a pair of, um, let's see, what would you call these? Open uh, cuff earrings. They're actually full marcasite because those are raised metal um, 
dots there. And there's this faux blue topaz stone. Uh, this is silver tone. And let's take a look at the back. There's the back. And they are marked. Avon. These are Avon earrings. Oops. Oopsie. And these are from the 70s. Really pretty, right? Well, I'm partial to, to blue. Next up is something else from Avon. This is uh, from 1973. It's actually um, made by D&E for Avon. D&E is Deliza and Elster. You may know them as collaborating with uh, Juliana on a lot of her items. And this is a Lariat gold tone bead, textured bead. And you see this is like a like a Ming green oval cabochon framed in a filigree design, gold tone. This bead chain, as you see, can you know just slides right through. It says Avon right there. This actually measures 38 inches long, including the tassels. Yep, there's tassels. Um, looking at these tassels, um, I see... I see some um, like discoloration on a couple of them on the left one. So you see there? There's maybe two strands that are discolored. And the, the right one, the right one looks good. It's got these plain bead caps and the adjustable bolo and this actually was featured in in the um, in the book called identifying uh, Avon jewelry by Sandy uh, Studevant so this is a Avon made by DNE lariat necklace Next up, these are from the 60s. These are vintage Givenchy silver tone clip-on earrings. You may say Givenchy or Givenchy, but whatever way you pronounce it, they are amazing. Um, they're from the 60s. They're ribbed, uh, wide, wide uh, hoops, open, open hoops. Um, there's the back. They're about an inch high and a three quarters of an inch wide. I mean, when I say heavy, um, let's weigh it. Okay, grab my scale, let's put them on, and that reads uh, 32.19 grams. So yeah, they're not, they're not lightweight, but they are really, really pretty. Oh wait, let me show you the mark. Duh, duh. Where is it? Mm, okay. Can you see? Is it upside down? Nope. Maybe. Is it? It's right there. It's on the clip. Vintage. 60s. Givenchy. 
Givenchy silver tone clip on earrings. Okay, so before I mentioned that some jewelry is not completely marked um, because they're part of a set. Here's an example of that. Um, this here is by Sarah Coventry. It's from uh, 1973 and it is called Four Dimensions. It's uh, four strands and it's gold plated aluminum. Therefore, it's really lightweight. And here is a jewelry tag. It says Sarah Co. This here is 24 inches long. Really um, nice, nice weight. I mean, it's not super light. There is a spring clasp, a nice gold tone, tone, <laughs> and here's the matching bracelet, which does not have a jewelry tag. This bracelet is uh, seven and a quarter inches long. And if you can see, let me bring it closer. These chain links alternate. Um, there's a, here, let me take these four out. This chain and then this, this one with the design. Kind of like a, I don't know, snaky design. So yeah, Sarah Coventry, 1973, four dimension set. Okay, last item. This here is a vintage 40s Italian 800 silver enameled butterfly brooch. Look at that. The enameling has a uh, a name, and um, I don't know how to pronounce it, but I wrote it down. How do you say that? That's the type of enameling it has. As you can see, there's this like blue and green, and um, even some purple. And it creates like a, a look of stained glass effect. It's got really intricate wire work and it's just incredible. The back of it, look at the back. I mean, it's so old, it's very faint, but it does say 800. And it actually says 78 GE. Don't know what that means, but um, 800 means 80% silver, 20% alloy. Uh, this, this beauty is about an inch and a quarter high and uh, an inch and three quarters wide. So she is the closing act of this pop-up vintage jewelry sale and i hope you enjoyed this okay that's a wrap on this pop-up sale of some of the vintage items i have from my etsy shop i hope you enjoyed the video and don't forget if there's something that you are interested in purchasing just send me an email at dragonflybees at gmail.com and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.